all Muslims are terrorists. No? Okay, all terrorists are Muslims. Is Islam a violent religion? Was Islam spread by this world? Is Christianity the religion of love and peace? Is Judaism the religion of love and peace? Are Muslims ordered by God to kill innocent people to get 72 virgins in heaven? What happens to someone if he leaves Islam? Do Muslims really have a problem with Jews? Do Muslims force women to cover their hair? Was Muhammad a warlord? Are Muslims trying to kill everyone on earth? Do Muslims really worship a moon god called Allah who wants to kill everyone on earth? Will the world be a safer place without 2 billion Muslims in it? For years, the media kept making these claims about Muslims 24-7 until billions around the world became racist Islamophobes without even knowing what Islam really is. And in the end, this happened. You want me to explode? Yes! That's what I've been waiting for! Um, okay, I'll try. <laughs> Hello, Akbar! Of all the world's religions, Islam is the most violent and aggressive. It encourages killing, or jihad as they call it, in the name of God. The U.S. launched a new wave of air attacks during the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Hey, Give that fucker up! Stand by! A long-awaited report says there is credible evidence that Australian elite soldiers unlawfully killed 39 people during the Afghan war. We were fishing and having a picnic. Around noon, the foreigners carried out their raid. They arrested my brother and took him to a corner. A few minutes later, they shot him in the head three times, and once in his stomach. Leave! What? There were actually offers to turn over bin Laden by the Taliban, and the United States refused. What? In the man's hand appears to be a set of red prayer beads. No weapon or radio can be seen. Great, no! Great, stop! Leave! Who looks scary out of these two? I mean, he looks a little intimidating, but I don't know if scary is yeah. The guy on the left, he's a model. Yeah. And the guy on the right is Jeffrey Dahmer. I knew it, I knew ah! it, I knew it. You were scared really? of the large what, what, crusaders, what, what, yeah? The large men from again? the north who came and eat you and your children. Yeah. You are fucking dinner to us. You are only alive because we have permitted it. Do you understand? One time, my wife and I went to a DSW, and I saw in the distance these two women in black burkas in my store. I cried as I prayed for enough strength to go over there and break both their necks. I had devised a plan, create my own IED homemade bomb, and I was going to set it off right outside the Muncie Islamic Center. 200 plus killed or injured, that was the plan. I saw an opportunity to do one last thing for my country. This was my rationale. Who do you find more attractive? This guy right here. On the, the, right. the one on the right? Yeah. Okay. And then finally, who would you trust? The guy on the right. So you trust the guy on the right? Yeah. 17 years ago, these pictures of smiling American guards abusing Iraqi prisoners shook the world uncovering the dark side of the U.S.'s war on terror. The gut-wrenching pictures of sexual abuse, humiliation, and torture of detainees at Abu Ghraib prison sent Washington into damage control. Few things undermined the U.S.'s claim that they were helping bring democracy to Iraq more than the scandal at Abu Ghraib. Today, New Zealanders are still, of course, grieving for the 50 people killed in those brutal attacks on the mosque that were motivated by hate, but they are also resolved that they won't be divided and that the deadly violence unleashed in those mosques will not happen again. But this is very much a country in mourning, struggling to deal with something so many still can't comprehend. I'm Muslim myself, so I feel, I feel like I'm part of the community and I feel, I feel guilty and I feel sad. You are living under our permission. You savages could be exterminated in a fucking second if you wanted to. And we will want to. You are bringing this on yourself because even though we are opening our doors and our hearts, we're welcoming you in. What do you monsters do? You spread shit. This is just the Muslim way of life. We don't want that shit. So don't you worry. 
Don't you worry, we will fucking destroy you and we will eat you for a dinner again. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No, no one, no one uh, uh, is allowed to steal it, Yami. Jacob, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But you're you're, it's you're, easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. Yeah, you are helping. stealing my house. In April, nearly four months later, the Abu Ghraib scandal broke when CBS News' 60 Minutes broadcast photos showing Iraqi detainees being humiliated and tortured. One showed a US soldier holding a prisoner on a strap made to look like a dog on a leash. Another showed a hooded man standing on a box and holding electrical wires. I do anything for my people, but I don't know what to do. I'm just 10. They don't see happiness. This is not fair for anyone. This is not fair for anyone in Gaza. I want them to see happiness. I want to be, I want to see happiness. We have a kindergarten, a kindergarten who got exploded by a missile from the occupiers. I want to cry. I want to let out my anger, out of my body, because they're killing people that they don't deserve to die. I did not even sleep last night. I'm really tired. I sleep in the mornings because of the explosions in the nights. I can't handle it. I cry in my heart, but I don't show it because I, I don't I don't want my brother to be scared. I say we will eat the Muslims for dinner. Yeah, it means you are down in the food chain and we are up in the food chain. Since Israel's creation in 1948, the United States has provided $236 billion in aid and missile defense funding. Human rights groups say the Israeli army has been using US-made military equipment to attack Gaza. In May 2021, Israeli air raids killed 200 people in Gaza during the first week of violence. Dozens were children. It's why people are increasingly asking, why does the US continue to be complicit in Israel's violation of human rights? This exchange happened on the BBC, the so-called guardian of unbiased reportage. Listen to how their panel describes the refugees from Ukraine. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed. People with blue eyes and blonde hair. That is why the so-called expert on the BBC is emotional, not because the people are homeless, not because their country is being invaded, but because their hair is blonde. These are not refugees from Syria. These are Christians, they're white, they're, um, they're very similar. Very similar to us. How so? Because the Syrian refugees are Muslims. Their skin is darker, their hair is not blonde. So Europe does not want them. And remember, this is not being said at some white supremacy cult. This is happening on live television. You know, like Iraq or Afghanistan, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. So Iraq and Afghanistan are uncivilized countries. Their people are uncultured. Their regimes are irresponsible. So they deserve war. They deserve hundreds of bombs and years of occupation. Ukraine is not a member of the European Union. It is not part of NATO. So what explains this level of assistance? Racism. You see, Ukrainians are Europeans. Hence, they get the red carpet. But Africans and Asians get border crackdowns and refugee camps. Western media is part of the problem, I have to say. They reflect the public mentality, their sense of European supremacy. And the problem is, governments are not doing anything to help. In fact, they're adding fuel to this fire. Let me show you what Bulgaria's prime minister said about refugees, I'm quoting. These people are intelligent. They're educated people. This is not the refugee wave we have been used to. People we are not sure about, we were not sure about their identity. People with unclear pasts who could have been even terrorists. That was a European head of state. He's openly calling West Asian refugees terrorists. If this does not expose Western hypocrisy, nothing does. I say we will eat the Muslims for dinner. Yeah, it means you are down in the food chain and we are up in the food chain. Are all these claims about Islam and Muslims really true? Or is it media trying to make you hate a group of people to justify attacking and killing them? In this video, we will settle this debate forever, so make sure you watch until the end first. We will read all verses from the Quran and from the Hadith, which is quotes by the Prophet Muhammad, about how should Muslims deal with Muslims and non-Muslims in war and in peace situations. We will also read all verses from the Bible about the same topics, and we will show you how that affected historical and current events. This video will not be small. We are clarifying and providing evidence to debunk years and years of racist claims. 
It will take time, but it's worth it. You will finally open your eyes and see what's going on for real. Don't judge, don't comment, don't close the video until you get the full picture first, then, and only then, let us know what you think in the comment section below. We will start by reading all verses from the Quran about how to treat non-Muslims in war and peace situations. But before we read, we need to understand something first. Quran is not only describing the relationship between every Muslim and God, no. Quran also describes the relationship between every Muslim and his parents and his family and his neighbors and society. Quran gives legislation for police rules, military rules, politics, and international relationships. Quran is a complete guidance that covers every aspect of human life. Now let's read verse by verse. Chapter 8 verse 60 And prepare for them whatever you are able of power and equipment by which you may terrify the enemy of God and your enemy and others beside them whom you don't know. This verse orders believers to have a powerful army ready to prevent any aggression towards them. Having powerful army will steer away enemies from you. Enemies you know and enemies you don't know. This is completely normal in the constitution of any country in the world right now. Every country on earth, small or big, has an army to show that they can defend themselves when needed. What's wrong with that? Chapter 47 verse 4 So when you meet those who disbelieve in battle, strike their necks until when you have inflicted slaughter upon them, then take captives, and then either let captives go without ransom as a favor or ask for ransom until the war is over. Islamophobes read this verse but purposely ignore the last sentence, until the war is over. They don't read this part to make it look like God is ordering Muslims to kill disbelievers in general. While it clearly says that you should be courageous in war, don't run away, and fight with power and courage until the war is over. It has nothing to do with peaceful people. It's only describing war situation. What's wrong with that? Chapter 8 verse 61 And if they incline to peace, then you incline to it too. God is giving a rule to Muslims to accept peace if their enemy offers peace. Still think that this is a violent religion? Chapter 5 verse 32 Killing one innocent soul is like killing all mankind. Saving one soul is like saving all mankind. Do you think Quran is ordering to kill innocent people while it clearly states that killing one innocent soul is like killing all mankind? Do you think this is a violent religion? Chapter 5 verse 33 Indeed, the legal retribution for those who commit acts of violence and terrorism against individuals for treason and aggression against the state and wage war against God and his messenger and strive upon earth to cause corruption is none but they should be killed or crucified or their hands and feet should be cut off from opposite sides or they should be exiled from the land. That's for them a disgrace in this world and for them in the hereafter is a great punishment. Again, this verse is asking believers to be very, very harsh towards people who commit violence and terrorism. It's ordering Muslims to stop terrorists and violent people. It has nothing to do with peaceful people. Still think that this is a violent religion? And if you read the next verse it says, Except for those who stop and repent before you overcome them, and know that God is forgiving and merciful. So God is also teaching Muslims to forgive these violent people if they decide to stop their aggression. Still think this is a violent religion? Chapter 4 verse 75 And what's the matter with you, that you fight not in the cause of God and for the oppressed among men, women and children who say, Our Lord, take us out of this city of oppressive people and appoint for us from yourself a protector and appoint for us from yourself a helper. Here God is teaching Muslims to help oppressed people. Don't be selfish and say it's their problem, it's not our problem. If people are oppressed and asking for help, Muslims should help them. This is fighting against oppressors and helping the innocent. Still think that this is a violent religion? Chapter 60 verse 8 God does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and act justly towards them. Indeed, God loves those who act justly. Here God is teaching Muslims to act righteously and justly towards non-believers who do not attack your country. Still think that this is a violent religion? Chapter 60 verse 9 God only forbids you from those who fight you because of your religion and expel you from your homes and aid in your expulsion. Forbids that you make allies with them. 
and whoever makes allies with them, then it's those who are the wrongdoers. So if someone attacks you and takes your homes, you shouldn't be their allies. Can you see anything wrong with that? So if someone is attacking you, God is forbidding you to be their allies. Like in chapter 5, for example, where Quran was talking about chosen Christians who made fun of Muhammad and took his message ridicule and amusement. God is asking Muslims not to be their allies. So it says, chapter 5, verse 51, O you who believe, do not take the Jews and the Christians as allies. They are in fact allies of one another. And whoever is allies to them among you, then indeed he is one of them. And then verse 57, O you who believe, take not those who have taken your religion in ridicule and amusement among the ones who are given the scripture before you, nor the disbelievers as allies. And fear God if you should truly be believers. And when you call to prayers, they take it ridicule and amusement. This is because they are people who do not use reason. Say, O oh people of the scripture, people of the scripture in Quran is Christians and Jews. Do you resent us for the fact that we have believed in God and what was revealed to us and what was revealed before and because most of you are definitely disobedient to God? You can think of these verses in the current political system as something like NATO. NATO members offer peace for the whole world, but they are only military allies with each other. So Muslims by default are allies like NATO and will not be allies with whoever don't respect their religion. What's wrong with that? Chapter 4 verse 94 O you who believed, when you go forth to fight in the cause of Allah, investigate, and do not say to one who gives you a greeting of peace, you're not a believer. This verse destroys the whole violence scream. Here God is teaching Muslims not to fight someone who offers peace, even if they think he is not a believer. So Muslims can't fight someone for the reason of being a disbeliever. This is not a reason. It's forbidden in Islam to fight a disbeliever for no reason. Still think this is a violent religion? Chapter 4 verse 91 So if they do not withdraw from you and offer you peace or restrain their hands, then seize them and kill them wherever you overtake them. Also this verse is used by Islamophobes a lot. They purposely read the second half of it to make it look like God is ordering Muslims to kill everyone. But if you read it, you can see that it starts with a condition. If they do not stop attacking you, if they do not offer peace, kill them. What's wrong with that? It has nothing to do with peaceful people. Chapter 9 verse 6 And if any of the polytheists seek your protection, then grant him protection, so that he may hear the words of God, Quran, then deliver him to his place of safety. Again, this is how God in the Quran is ordering Muslims to treat disbelievers who are peaceful. Still think this is a violent religion? Chapter 2 verse 190 Fight in the way of God those who fight against you, but do not transgress. Indeed, God does not like transgressors. This verse is very, 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 very clear. God ordered Muslims to only fight back against whoever attacks them, and clearly told Muslims never to be the attackers, to always be on the defender's side. Still think this is a violent religion? Chapter 2 verse 193 Fight them until there is no more fitna and until religion is acknowledged to be for God. But if they stop their aggression, then there is to be no aggression or assault except against the oppressors. This verse is usually used by Islamophobes. They only read the first part to make it seem like God is ordering Muslims to start a war. But if you read it fully, it says, fight them until they stop their aggression. That clearly means defend yourself against those who are committing aggression towards you. And if they stop, you also stop. What's wrong with that? Still think this is a violent religion? Chapter 49 verse 9 And if two factions among the believers should fight, then make settlement between the two. But if one of them oppresses the other, then fight against the one that oppresses until it returns to the ordinance of God. And if it returns, then make settlement between them in justice and act justly. Indeed, God loves those who act justly. This verse shows that war is only against the oppressors even if they are Muslims. So it doesn't matter if they are Muslims or not. The point is God doesn't like oppressors. It has nothing to do with the religion. And finally, chapter 49 verse 13. O mankind, indeed we created you from male and female and made you nations and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of God is the most righteous. Indeed, God is all-knowing and all-aware. This verse clearly says that we should know each other, not fight with each other. Still think this is a violent religion?
what about verses that say to force people to become Muslims or force women to cover their hair or kill whoever who leaves Islam? Let's read them together. Chapter 10, verse 99. And had your Lord willed, those on earth would have believed, all of them, entirely. Then Muhammad, why would you force the people to become believers? God is clearly disapproving any kind of force when it comes to advising people to believe. Chapter 18, verse 29. And say, the truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. This verse is self-explanatory. If you don't want to believe, don't believe. It's very clear. Chapter 50, verse 45. We are most knowing of what they say, and you are not to force people to believe or submit, but remind by the Quran whoever feels hellfire. Again, this one is also self-explanatory. Don't force people to believe. You just give reminder to whoever fears hellfire. That's it. Deliver the message. Don't force anyone. Chapter 109. Say, disbelievers, I do not worship what you worship, nor you are worshippers of what I worship, nor I will be a worshipper of what you worship, nor you will be worshippers of what I worship. For you is your religion, and for me is my religion. This is another chapter describing the relationship between Muslims and non-Muslims. Can you see any force or aggression here? For you is your religion, for me is my religion. Where is the violence? Chapter 2 verse 256 There shall be no compulsion or force in the acceptance of religion. This is pretty direct. The right course has become distinct from the wrong. This final verse is as clear as the sun. Doesn't need any further explanation. No compulsion or force in the acceptance of religion. And regarding whoever leaves Islam, God is giving a huge threat in the Quran. Read this one with me. Chapter 5, verse 54. O you who believed, whoever of you should revert from his religion, God will bring forth instead of him people, and he will love them, and they will love him. God didn't say kill them or force them. God said he will guide other people who will love him, and he will love them. Where is the killing part? Then what is the apostasy rule in Islam? In other words, what happens if you leave Islam? The short answer is nothing, absolutely nothing. And the long answer is it's permissible to kill someone who left Islam and did treason to his country. Someone who left Islam and joined enemy forces, whether physically or by providing secret information to enemies to help them. This is what we call now a spy or an agent to an enemy army in war situation. This particular person should be executed. Unfortunately, some people misunderstood two hadith or quotes from the Prophet Muhammad. The first one, it says, it's forbidden to execute any Muslim except for three reasons. One of them is, whoever left Islam and went against the group. And because this one is not very clear, Prophet Muhammad clarified himself in another hadith. Said the same thing again. He said, it's forbidden to execute any Muslim except for three reasons. One of them is whoever left Islam and started a war against our nation. Hope it's clear now that it's a normal rule that almost every country on earth, including your own country, has it. Hope it's clear now that Quran clearly forbids any kind of force in religion in any way. Hope it's clear now that Quran clearly forbids any kind of terror or aggression towards peaceful nations. These are 22 verses talking about war and peace in 600 plus pages in the Holy Quran. All of these 22 verses can be put in one page. Maybe someday you should also read the other 599 pages talking about how to be a decent human being. <laughs>